Good evening, and thank you for joining us at this Lions Quest Building a Support System. We're going to talk tonight about Lions Quest. We're going to hit some of the information that many of you have seen before about the need and the solution, but then we're going to take a deep dive into how do we get the excitement built in your district so that working together, we can, in fact, impact the youth in our community. We can take at-risk uh, children, move them through a support system offered by Lions Quest and by uh, Lions and help them to become productive parts of society, reducing the number of times that they go and see juvenile justice, helping them to overcome their adverse childhood experiences and helping them to understand that giving back to the community is vital for all of us as we work together. Now, because we do have a smaller group tonight, I want all of you to understand that if you have a question, just stop me. This is gonna be very interactive. We want to make sure that together we develop a vision and a plan and understand. Our, my goal this evening is to educate you about Lion's Quest and the tools that are available, to excite you about Lion's Quest as it impacts your community, but most importantly, to empower you to use your imagination as to how that it will best fit in your district, in your, in your agencies. We're going to take and begin to move through the presentation. And the need is great. And many of you have seen these statistics. So indulge me for just a second that every 45 seconds, a child or teen is arrested somewhere in the United States. That's 700,000 children a year that are crying for our assistance as lions. Every two minutes, a child is placed in foster care without any dignity. They're, most of the time, the caseworker is going in with a Walmart bag, throwing a few clothes into that bag, and taking them off to that foster home. And we as lions, if we did nothing else but to collect carry-on-sized suitcases and take it to our child welfare workers and say, here, we would like the kids going into foster care to have some dignity. Here's a carry-on suitcase for them to have. We as Lions want to give it to them. We've had this uh, project in our community. We've collected 10 or we've collected 50 or we've collected 100 and we just want to help. Even if we did nothing with Lions Quest, we just started giving these children an opportunity to see that they're worth something and people care. Every 24 hours in the public school system, over 14,000 students are suspended and gun violence is the leading cause of death ages one through 19. And we know that from the shooting in, out in Texas and over the last weekend, there was 10 mass shootings in the United States. 17 individuals lost their lives. If I remember the uh, news article uh, correctly, that's the need. The solution is very easy. We have to take and empower our most at-risk youth with an understanding of how to make better decisions and manage themselves, with a, the ability to understand their self-worth and how what they bring to the table that enhances their community, to make responsible decisions, to have better friend groups, and to be aware of their social aware, awareness, their society and their community around them, and the diversity, that social emotional learning. And when we, in fact, educate our at-risk youth. We excite them about some service learning and we empower them to take charge of their lives and to lead in their community. We are going to have a better quality of life for everyone. What the youth will practice in Lions Quest is we'll build healthy relations in, among our communities and among, among our peers. And you've already seen this, but it's so important. We're gonna go over it one more time. We're connecting with schools and caring adults because when at-risk youth understand that the com school community and the, the adults in their community are all there cheering them on toward success, they begin to open up and they can discover how to choose conflict resolution over aggression, how to resist substance abuse, truancy and delinquent behaviors. And when we do that, then in fact, we are going to begin to uh, move our communities in a more positive direction. Tonight we have, if, if I've counted correctly, we've got about 20 different multiple districts represented 
in this call tonight. And if we could take in every multiple district in just the next six months and start one Lions Quest Specialty Club or one Lions Quest branch, then we are going to begin to make a difference. And we're gonna step through that process tonight. But let me tell you that Lions Quest is evidence-based. In Florida at the Pace Center for Girls, prior to Lions Quest, 78% were failing one or more classes. Prior to Lions Quest, 18% were previously involved with the juvenile justice system, and 58% had been suspended or expelled from school. After we completed our Lions Quest program, 90% improved academically. If we stopped there, we would call the program a success, but we didn't stop there. 91% were not involved with juvenile justice system one year after the intervention. After Lions Quest, we dropped from 18% involved with juvenile justice system to 9% involved. We cut it in half. That is an amazing stat. And then 58% suspended or expelled. That means that 42% had not been. Now, 74% remained in school, in college, or employed after one year. And so once again, we, we cut that 58% down to 26%. Together, we're making a difference in the lives of youth. Lions in the United States can and will make a difference by taking and embracing this uh, Lions Quest program. Many of you have already seen this. Uh, I believe my friend Dennis Chapman's on the call and he knows that when we build a team, we build a vision, we build a plan and we build success that we have a proven model for finding greater success than ever before. And so tonight, we're gonna to talk about building that team. For a moment, we're gonna talk about that vision and we're gonna focus a lot on building the plan because the success is saving that one child. What does our team look like for tonight's discussion when it comes to Lions Quest? The team starts with the Lions in our community, an existing club, a newly formed club branch, or newly formed Lions Club, those Lions, but also then reaching out and partnering with those families and with our school systems, with our community, with our juvenile justice system, with our foster care system, bringing them all together and then more, doing more than just bringing them together, introducing them to the Lions Quest material. But not just saying, here's the material, here's a license to use it, run, do the best you can. We as Lions are building relationships because leaders build relationships. We're leaders according to John Maxwell because we have a position, but it's when we add value to those around us that they give us permission to lead. And then collectively we begin to work together and we begin to find the, to produce the results we're looking for. And so we're gonna take this family group, we're gonna take this material and we're gonna build a relationship by providing training, training our facilitators on how to best work with at-risk students, modeling what a good lesson plan would look like and helping us to facilitate and not to lecture because at-risk students, most of them really like to discover things uh, their own way. And my mama would say, Jerome, you've got to learn things the hard way. Well, our at-risk children need to learn things on their own way, oftentimes the hard way. And we have to provide them the venue to think, discuss, and to discover why that they should be choosing conflict resolution over aggression. Why that they should be looking at their friend group and asking, are they helping me to reach my goals or are they dragging me down? And so many other uh, great lessons that we're gonna find. The Lions are building the team, the Lions, the family, the school, the social workers, the Children's Protective Services. We're going to provide the material and we're going to build a relationship through the Lions Quest training. And finally, we're gonna have that training focus on some service learning because when students take pride in their community and they begin to invest in their community and they see the product of their, their work, then they are going to become 
more productive parts of society, and they're going to think twice before they take and break the law. That's the team, the Lions Quest material, the relationship we're building, and the service learning. What's the vision? Our vision for a better tomorrow. And this is an overall vision, because as you form your club branches, as you form your clubs or you have clubs that embrace Lions Quest, they're going to develop the vision for their community because every community is a little different. But wouldn't it be great if we, the Lions, could serve 700,000 children who have been arrested every year? Wouldn't it be great if we took the 262,000 children that are placed, in, placed in foster care and provided them the self-esteem to stand up tall and say, I'm going to break the cycle. My parents may not have been good parents, but I'm going to be an outstanding parent. If we could eliminate gun violence as the leading cause of death. There's so many other visions that you can form as you put your team together in your district. And now we're going to begin to expand our footprint of service. The plan is really easy. We're going to take the Lions Quest as our leader, what well, it's going to take us in the community. We're going to go to our existing clubs and we're going to ask them, would you like to embrace this in your community? And if they say yes, we're going to work with our existing clubs to put in Lions Quest as a service model. If they say, oh, we're not sure. Well, would you take five or six people in the community and make them a branch and let them run ahead with this? No, we're not interested. That's fine. We've given you your opportunity. Now we're going to go out and form a specialty club because we believe that we can find 20 or more individuals in our community that love children enough to take and form a club with one focus and one interest, and that is putting Lions Quest in the juvenile justice system in a foster care group home, in an after-school program, or in an alternative school setting. We're not going to bang our head against the wall trying to get into the, into the traditional classroom. Rather, we're going to take and provide Lions Quest to our most at-risk children. You know what we're going to find in a few years? We're going to find that our traditional schools are going to see the benefit of Lions Quest in these altern alternative settings and they're going to come to us and say, how do we move this into, into the traditional classroom? And then we are going to know that we're leaders because the community is bringing their problem to us to solve. And so let's talk for just a second. There's a 10-step new club development process that was developed over the last three years, talking with new club consultants across the United States, talking with district governors who were very successful in starting clubs. And this is an overview of the 10 steps. And tonight we're gonna to talk about steps one, determine the area of opportunity. We're gonna talk about step two, developing your team. And we're gonna talk about step three, conducting your site development research. And we're gonna take about a month off so that we can do hands-on and finish these three steps. And we're gonna get back together on July 6th. Anyone that wants to continue to walk this journey of providing Lions Quest, and walk with us as we impact youth. And on the sixth, we're gonna talk about promoting the new club. We're gonna talk about recruiting charter members. We're gonna talk about conducting informational sessions. And then on July 26th, after you've had time to implement those three steps in your district, we're gonna talk about conducting your organizational meeting, submitting your ch charter application, your charter approval process, and continuing to develop and celebrate the success of your club. Now tonight, as we talk about the first three steps, the most important thing that we need to understand is that everyone on this call is at a different spot in your journey. Some of you are just brand new to the discussion and you want to be part of this movement for Lions Quest across the United States. Others of you, have talked to, briefly about it, about the concept in your district. And you've got two or three people that are saying, yes, we need to move forward. And then others have already started reaching out and talking to some agencies, talking with some juvenile court judges. And you have some interest built, but you're not real sure how to move forward. Well, 
I want you to, to know that each of us are going to take and move forward just a little bit different. Why? Because the needs of our youth are not identical. What we need in North Alabama with our youth may have nothing to do with what the youth of New York or the youth of Chicago or Wichita, Kansas or out in California need because we're going to take and listen. We're going to learn and we're going to embrace the community where we are because when we take our community where we are, we take our lions where they are, we take those interested in becoming lions where they are, and we begin to coach and move them in a positive direction, we're gonna find greater success. It's not a one size fits all, but we're going to take and try to bring Lions Quest to your community in a way that benefits your community. The commitment of Lions vary. We're gonna have some clubs that say, absolutely not, we're not interested. We're gonna have some that embrace it wholeheartedly and get excited. We're gonna have some clubs that say, it's not for the whole club, but if you want us to, to bring in five or six members and form a branch, we'll be more than happy to do that. And then we may have to start a whole new club. So the commitment of Lions vary. So the way we implement Lions Quest in our communities are gonna vary. There's sometimes we're gonna put Lions Quest in the juvenile justice system, and then we're gonna form a club to support it. Other times we're gonna form a club to support Lions Quest and while we're putting the Lions Quest in the juvenile justice system. We are got to be flexible and our partners will all be different. Our foster care is gonna have greater needs and different needs than our after school programs. Our alternative school setting is going to be different than our juvenile justice setting. And so let's all think to ourselves, we're going to be flexible. We're going to listen. We're going to learn. We're going to embrace their differences. We're going to help them to find a solution by providing Lions Quest in a very positive way moving forward. Now, this is the most important thing on this slide. And Lions Quest is evidence-based. And therefore, we must follow the formula to achieve the desired results, which means that we're going to present the lessons in the same order that the lessons have been successful in other areas. We're going to be a facilitator of communication and help the students, the at-risk children, discover for themselves how to apply the material to their lives. We're going to reinforce it by some of our discussion but we in, in no way are going to be lecturers. No, these children do not like to be lectured to. And to be quite honest, each of us would much rather discover for ourselves than be told what to do. And so the evidence-based portion of it, we're not gonna tinker with, but the implementation, we're going to be very open and we're going to take and allow your creativity and the creativity of those we're working with to take over. We might want to do this out under a tree. We may want to sit in, in the middle of Chick-fil-A. I don't know what would work in your community, but I'm here to tell you that you can take and use your imagination, work with your court system, work with your ch child welfare system, figure out what it's gonna take to be positive and, and move forward. So how do we get started? Well, each of us are gonna to have to look around and ask ourselves, where are we? And so tonight for just a second, I'm gonna act as if we're all on the starting block and we're ready to move forward. In the next few minutes, we're gonna cover the first three steps of forming Alliance Quest Specialty Club. And then we're gonna talk about the resources that are here because we're not leaving you out there to be stranded. We're gonna tell you where the tools are. We're gonna to tell you where the tool shed is and we're gonna help you because I'm committed to helping us to form Lions Quest Special Clubs across the United States. And Kim Haynes and staff is committed to helping us to uh, implement successful programs across the United States. I'm gonna stop right here. Does anyone have any questions? If you do, unmute yourself ask those questions, and then we'll begin to move on.
That's awesome. Grab your pencil and paper because now's the time to take a few notes because you'll want to share this with your district. When this webinar is over, we're gonna take the recording, we're gonna post it on YouTube, and we're gonna put the link at the Global Membership Approach CA1, CA2 Facebook page so that you can begin to share it uh, in your district. The other thing that, that we're going to do is we're going to have uh, the ability in a few minutes for you to take your camera out and take a picture of the QR code. So you'll have the introductory PowerPoint that you need to share with your district and others. So where do we start? The first thing we have to do is we have to determine that area of opportunity. Now's the time for you to take your phone out, uh, put it on camera, take a picture of the QR code. <clears throat> when you get over to the slide presentation, then at the bottom there's gonna be a box and arrow. If you'll click that, click email, you can email the presentation to yourself. It'll be on your computer. And then you'll have everything you need to share the Lions Quest introduction PowerPoint with your district, with your club, with your juvenile judge and everyone else. So let's take about 30 seconds, no more than a minute. Take a picture of the QR code. Email it to yourself. And so part of the step one is to share the Lions Quest vision with uh, Lions. Hang on just a second. To share this Lions Quest vision with your district, you've got the PowerPoint there. And then as we determine that area of opportunity, we've got to ask ourselves, how can we network? How do we find Lions who have already got relations with the juvenile justice court. You look at those oh, child welfare workers that's already working with the juvenile judge. You look at the attorneys then in your district who are already working with the judges and know the judges. Look at the alternative schools. Who's the superintendents? Who's the supervisors in the school system? Who are the teachers? Who can we leverage? How can we get that introduction? The foster care group homes were back to the child welfare services but also some of the directors and some of the workers in these group homes may already, may already be lions. At the same with the after school program or the behavioral service agencies in your community. Begin to, to talk, start that conversation, use the PowerPoint to, to let folks know the need, the solution and build a vision for a better community. And we begin to build a vision of where Lions Quest can serve the needs of the youth. Because we've already built that team and we're gonna build a greater team within our district, but we're also gonna to begin to, in that conversation to ask ourselves, who knows somebody and where would Lions Quest fit? And if somebody calls you and says, well, Lions Quest fit this group and their children that's at risk and there's three or four, the answer is yes because if we save one child, all of our efforts are worth it. Now, I'll also tell you that if any of you need it, I'll be more than happy to schedule a Zoom presentation to talk with the Lions of your district about Lions Quest specialty programs, the Lions Quest specialty branch, club branch, and we can do that via Zoom. We'll schedule that. We'll promote it. We'll invite up to 100 lions across your district together, and we'll get everyone excited at the same time. Whatever it takes, I will put my money where my mouth is and tell you that I'm here to help you to move forward. About 15 seconds, if you've not hit the QR code, now's the time to do it, because in the next 30 days, everyone on the call is going to begin to start the conversation you start the conversation in your district with your club. You're going to begin to identify the lions that have relations that can help us to move from where we are to where we want to be. And that is Lions Clubs, uh, Lions Quest being implemented and new Lions Clubs being formed around the concept. And we're going to build, begin to build that vision in our district. The next thing we need to do is we need to develop that district team because we cannot do this alone. This work 
is so intense that we need some people that we can call and talk to on a regular basis. And each time after we share the Lions Quest concept, we need to be asking how much time will you donate to change the life of a child? Is that five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, an hour a week, two hours a month? Because whatever you can donate, we're going to take and find a way for you to be on our team because together we're better. And we're gonna hold regular team meetings. And those team meetings are gonna be centered around some questions like, where is Lions Quest needed? Who do we know in that space? How do we become a, the voice for the youth in our community? Who's going to present the idea? Is there LCIF grants, funds available? Who will serve as specialty club coordinator? And we're gonna talk about why that you need a specialty club coordinator in your district. And I'll tell you, and the, the hint is there's money to help you to form clubs if you have a specialty club coordinator in your district. So who's on our team that we're building? We're the Lions Quest Chair. And if you don't have one, ask your district governor elect to find someone whose passion and purpose intersect at Lions Quest at at-risk youth and appoint them to be the Lions Quest Chair. That's gonna get you connected to the network of Lions Quest Chairs. It's gonna provide you information. It's gonna be an opportunity to learn about building coalitions and about changing the lives of our first youth. Bring in on your GMT, your global membership team leader. And soon at the International Convention, you're gonna hear about the GET, the global extension team leader. Bring them onto your team. Bring your district governor team onto the team. And Lions who are already engaged in the juvenile courts and alternative schools, bring them onto your team because we've already started looking about where the opportunities are. We're now forming this team together in the next 30 days, because when we do that, then we're going to begin to conduct site development research. If we're out starting a new club, we go into that community, we eat at McDonald's, we have coffee at the coffee shop, we listen, we learn, we begin to read their newspaper, and we know what's going on in the community. If we're interested in forming clubs around Lions Quest, we're gonna to have to do the same thing. We're gonna to have to begin to do some research about at-risk youth. What's the problem in the community? Is it marijuana or is it meth? What's the problem in the community that we can solve? Is it truancy or is it juvenile delinquency? Why are these youth at risk? Is it because of their family situation? Or is it because of the friends they've selected? We need to know because as we listen, as we learn, as we embrace, we're putting together our sales presentation that we're going to present to juvenile judges, that we're going to present to alternative schools, after school programs, to foster care programs. And it's time as we're doing our research to begin to apply for the Alliance Quest promotional grant. That grant is going to give you $1,500 to promote this concept. And you're gonna promote this concept by having some light refreshments or maybe even a meal for 25, 30, 50 influential in individuals in the community who can help us to form a club and to bring Lions Quest to your community. You're gonna go ahead and, and reach out to Lions Clubs International and Lions Quest Division and ask them to send you some children at risk brochures. It's a new brochure that was put together by our marketing team. It's eight page booklet that talks about uh, our at risk children and how Lions Quest can help them and how caring individuals are coming together to form Lions Quest, Lions Clubs together. Now, once you find that one agency that one court system, that one after school program that says, yes, we want to bring Lions Quest in, then it's time for you to close out your $1,500 grant and apply for your $15,000 grant, and which is a Lions Quest Community Partnership Grant. That grant is going to provide you the resources to provide license to your facilitators for five years. 
to provide that training that we've talked about, to provide your graduation certificates, to provide the first year's Leo Community Leo Club uh, $100 to start it. All they can be paid out of that 15,000, possibly to provide some uh, refreshments or some snacks because a lot of our at-risk students have food insecurities and they don't know where their next meal is coming from. And if they're going to stay after school or they're going to stay and go to the juvenile justice program, then we need to make sure that we help them along the way because we cannot uh, take and reach a hungry child. And then you're building the momentum toward forming that new club Steps four, five, six is discussed in one month after we finish these first uh, three steps. And then on the 26th of July, we're going to talk about wrapping this up because if you've not heard, let me tell you that our incoming vice president, Brian Sheehan, is going to have a fast start program and recognize district governors and district governor teams that start clubs in July and August. And then it's also going to recognize this year's district governor because we know that you have to start now to have a club chartered in July or August. And so let's take and build that momentum. Let's bring those members in. And the more members we bring in in June, that means the more members that will be able to take advantage of the uh, entrance fee waiver, which expires June 30th. So let's get out there and let's step through st the first three steps. If you, get, if you need uh, uh, the other steps discussed before then, reach out to me. Otherwise, we're going to take on July 6th and talk about the next three steps. I want you to know that you're not standing alone. Lions Clubs International has Gene Ewart in the Specialty Club Division, Tracy Gray that works with our new club consultants. We have Guy Schmally who is working uh, with the global action team and providing resources. We have the foundation, our Alliance Club International Foundation that's providing grants. And we have Alliance Quest Division and Department who's here to walk alongside us and help us, not only help us to get started, but help us to be sustainable as we move forward. And so let me share with you some of the tools that we have, some of the resources that we have as we move forward. First of all, is that promotional grant, $1,500. It's going to provide us an opportunity uh, to have some community meetings. It's going to provide us an opportunity to, to get some promotional material. It's going to provide us an opportunity uh, to have some gas money to, to go and to share this concept across our district. The $1,500 uh, is going to move and be used fairly quickly. But fear not, because we're coming right back with that $15,000 grant. It's 100% grant, no matching required. They're accepted year round. It's, that's going to help us with our licensing of the material. It's going to help us train those teachers. It's going to help us with certificates. It's going to help us with our Leo Club. Because ultimately, wouldn't it be great that every time one of our at risk students finished the Lions Quest program, they were immediately giving membership in the Leo Club? And then the Lions begin to work with them so that there's service projects, there's opportunities for socialization, there's opportunities for learning, ship, learning uh, leadership skills. The other thing is once we put them in on my LCI, as a Leo member, they get a Lion family number, which gives them access to our Learn Center. So they can go to our Learn Center and learn those skills that they need to be successful time management, decision-making, conflict resolution. And so our Leos are building their resume. They're, when they go to apply for a job, they go to apply for a trade school or they apply for a two or four year uh, college or university. And they put on all of these uh, courses they've taken at our Lions Learn Center, they're gonna be heads and shoulders above everyone else that's applying, they're gonna qualify for uh, scholarships that otherwise they would not have gotten. What we as Lions are doing is we're providing a foundation for our at-risk students to
to gain the skills they need through Lions Quest. And then we're mentoring them through the rest of their high school career through the Leo Club so that when they graduate, they're going to find greater success. We will have broken the cycle of poverty. We will have broken the cycle of abuse for some. We will have broken the cycle of food insecurity for some. And we are going to invite them to join Alliance Club and they will see the benefit and they'll want to reach back and help people to have a hand up just as we've given them. And that $15,000 grant is there. And if you get real excited, there's another grant beyond that that does require a match that's from 50,000 to 150,000. That's beyond what we're talking about tonight, but it's out there. The Lions Quest page at www.lions-quest.org. That's where you can find all the information that you want about Lions Quest. You're gonna, what is Lions Quest? How, how does Lions Quest and mental health work hand in hand? How does Lions Quest and drug prevention, the awards that are available and the grants are available right there. We've got the whole page and the whole website. You just begin to dig and dig and dig. You're gonna get as excited as I am because we've got some fantastic tools there. Here's some other resources. All of these are available to you and all these will be in the recording so that you can see them. We've got some videos on Vimeo. Uh, we've got the grants. We've got uh, the email address there, lionsquest at lionsclubs.org or lcif at lionsclubs.org to talk about the grants. Whatever that you need, you send it to lionsquest at lionsclubs.org and our team there will get it directed to the right person in the building so that we can get you the, the resources that you need. The Specialty Club program has its own webpage too, lionsclubs.org slash specialty clubs. Now, when you identify one or two people in your district that says, yes, I want to help you to start a specialty club around Lions Quest. If they sign up to be a, Lion, a specialty club coordinator and they form two clubs, then Lions Clubs International is prepared to reimburse their actual expenses up to $1,000 when that second club is formed. Or if they want to do three, we will reimburse up to $2,000 if they'll form three specialty clubs across your district. Now, you take and figure out who that person is, that key person in your district, and begin to keep track of expenses, start those clubs, and then be reimbursed. That way your district's not out as much money to start a new club. You've got the $1,500 promotional grant, you've got the specialty club coordinator grant, you've got the $15,000 uh, community partnership grant. I believe that any district that wants to start clubs around Lions Quest can find a way to do it within the budget that all the grants offer. There's a specialty club pocket guide, a PowerPoint, uh, model mapping worksheets, there's videos, there's awards, there's recognition. Go there, spend some time digging into that material. If you have a question, send it to Jean Ewart at lionsclubs.org and she will help you. Send it to Kimberly Haynes, kimberly.haynes at lionsclubs.org send it to lionsquest at lionsclubs.org. Send it in and we're all going to work. We're going to rally around you. But fear not, there's more tools there. We're getting it, digging back deeper into that tool shed and we're finding this uh, new club webpage, lionsclubs.org slash start hyphen a start hyphen new hyphen club, start a new club separated by hyphens. You're going to find out about the new club development workshops, the PowerPoints, the Mile CIL charter application instructions, everything you need to know about starting a new club, you're going to find there on that web page. We have all kinds of resources to, to help you as we move forward. What does success look like? You'll have to define that for your district. Your team needs to begin now to talk about what does success look like? How do we know when we've arrived? Because when we arrive at our first success, we're going to be so excited, we're going to set a second and a third goal. And we're going to move through the second level of success 
and the third level of success. For me, as a constitutional area leader with Lions Club, success looks like six to 10 new Lions Quest clubs between now and December 31st of 2022. And with over 20 multiple districts represented on this call tonight, and with everyone excited about what we can do to improve the lives of youth, I believe we may very well be able to get that done by October 1st, and then we'll begin to set another stretch goal and impact more lives. And so what are we doing tonight in the next 30 days? We're de determining the area of opportunity. We are developing our district teams and we are beginning to conduct our site development research and applying for that uh, first 1500 Lions Quest promotional grant. Now, let me tell you, those, both of those grants are limited to two per multiple district per fiscal year. And so we're gonna have to share a little bit. We're gonna have to, to work together within our multiple district to make sure that all of our needs are met and as we're moving forward. And so how can you help? First, between now and July 6, complete those first three stops, those first three steps and join us on our call on July the 6th so that we can discover the next few steps in the process. And so we take three steps, we get back together July 6th, we take three more steps, we get together on July 26th, we take four steps, and by the time that we reach August the 30th, we're going to be dancing in the aisles and celebrating the success of bringing Lions Quest and Lions Quest clubs to our district. Now it's the time for questions and answers, and I'm gonna stop sharing so we can all see one another. If you have a question, now's the time to unmute yourself and let's begin to, to talk about those questions and share our vision for what success looks like. Who'd like to go first? Raise your hand, anybody? Jane. Hi. Pardon my ignorance, but how old is this program? This is the first I've heard about it. Uh, Lions Clubs International Foundation purchased the program about 30 years ago. And we've been using it in the traditional classrooms for the last 28 years. But because the, the social emotional learning has become a profitable venture for a lot of for-profit companies, then we sort of got squeezed out because we don't have the millions to market and the, a, a huge sales force and things of that nature. And so working with Lions uh, Clubs International Foundation, Lions Quest Department, we asked the question in October, where is this program needed? And where is there not a voice in the space? And we determined with at-risk children, there was not a voice and that our program, our service learning with Lions Quest uh, would in fact uh, be a fit where no one else is reaching because most of your for-profit companies are taking it to the traditional classroom. Your at-risk students are not in the traditional classroom. They're all over here in the alternative school. They're in the juvenile justice system. They're in the foster care system. And then our children that are staying after school, a lot of times are staying there because their parents are both working and they don't have a lot of positive influence there. Uh, now, that's not all of them. I'm just saying that, that there's a lot of them. So by taking Lions Quest to the after-school programs, once again, we're helping these uh, students who are at the potential of being at risk to find greater success. Did that answer your question, Jan? Other questions? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Claudette, a question? A comment? No, I understand the process. We've gone, we've had a club, in, uh, our club involved in the uh, program in school. So I, I'm, a, I'm aware of everything. We're, we're just going to take an, a step back from school. I think it's an awesome program. And go do an end around run. Uh, Bob Lee over in Hawaii. Uh, Y'all have been talking about this for a couple, three weeks now, right? Uh, yes, we have, uh, I and Jerome. Uh, the 
question I have is for the community uh, partnership grant. Uh, what could the grant be used for? That's a very good question. And Kim is on the, the call tonight. And so Kim, will you give us a list of maybe four or five, six things that the community partnership $15,000 grant could be used for? Uh, good evening. Um, so the community partnership grant is designed to um, really help districts and multi-districts pilot a program. So usually you've done a 1500, you've gotten your, your partners together, and there's a group that wants to actually adopt and take the lead in implementing the program. So that money can go to cover the cost of training. We will send a trainer out to um, help the implementers actually learn how to use the curriculum and the materials. Um, it can also be used to actually provide those implementers with the curriculum, um, as well as continuing to promote the program. Um, a couple of things that are that can be used, um, um, sustainable promotional activities. Um, items such as um, getting a multiple district banner that has Lions Quest in your multiple district on it or a tablecloth so that when you're out in the community, you can actually raise the visibility of um, the program. So um, the grants are pretty much um, taken on a case by case basis. And we do try to work really hard with districts to make sure that they are um, using, the, using the funds in a way that really helps um, your local efforts and sort of within those guidelines, training materials, um, promotional materials, as well as um, sometimes you can use some of the grant funds to cover mileage reimbursement, as well as um, working with local experts to provide additional um, speaking engagements or to support the um, organization that's actually using the program. Uh, could we use this in conjunction with additional training? Because, you know, for us in Hawaii, the, uh, the problem for us is to get a lot of the other lions from the neighbor islands to a, a training site. So if we were to have a weekend training period, would we be able to use this grant to do training on one day for the Quest program? and perhaps training on, on, on another day for other things for the district? No. no so, okay. but, but we will not micromanage your training agenda. So if our grants conceptually covers the first two hours or the first three hours, we're not going to make you send everybody home because you're talking about something different later on in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah you know, we normally have a, a three-day training session. And if we were to use one day for the Quest training and perhaps use the second day for, for other district training, would, would that be uh, acceptable for a community uh, well, you you would have to get me your give me the application and give me a little bit more detail. But if if your question is, I have a three day MD training. I have a, a three day training. And on day one, we're gonna do leadership one on one. On day two, we're gonna do Lions Quest, and on day three, we're gonna do fundraising. Will your Lions Quest grant cover all three days? No. Will it cover the cost of the time that you have set aside specifically to talk about Lions Quest? Yes. Is it smart to have it packaged within the context text of a larger, more um, robust series of trainings? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Lion Lee, let me uh, also talk about for just a second the specialty club workshop grants that are available from Gene Eward in the membership department. And for your multiple district, well, you're, you're a single district. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's about $2,000 there. And if you'll spend two hours or so going through the specialty club workshop, then you can use that some of that money to get together, maybe rent a room or have a meal or whatever. And then from there, if you stay after lunch and you do some other things, that, that's fine too. And so you can leverage that. You might also look at the grant for a um, new voices symposium uh, that may be beneficial. And you can also look at the grant money that's available for 
RLLIs. And so once you begin to uh, sort of look for all the money and see how that they might fit together, uh, you can begin to bring the people from the islands together. Well, thank you very much, Landro. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm all for getting you trained and making sure that we find greater success. Uh, other questions, comments, concerns? We've been going about 50 minutes and I, don't, I want to be mindful of everyone's time. I'll, I'll throw one out. Wrong, Dennis. Hey, uh, Dennis, hang on just a second. Doug was sure. about to speak and then, then you're going to be next, okay? Uh, okay, this, this will be fast. I'm in the same club with Jan and we're in a community that has some problems, but we border larger communities. I also have more than 30 years experience in the juvenile court system. And the biggest need I see is, is uh, the foster care parents do a pretty good job but the children in need of assistance. Uh, children are uh, battered, they're dragged into court because the parents are neglecting them, abusing them. Uh, and I, the question I've got is I'm a little disappointed I don't see other people in our district uh, participating today, but where do we start? Do we start by, certainly I'm willing to approach the judges and the people uh, that deal with these children to see where the need is in the bordering communities. We've just started a Leo's club in, in Hudson and it's really growing very rapidly. So, you know, I need guidance as I think most of us need guidance as to where to begin. Okay. Find out the need in the community or where do we get the help? Very good. Tell me which community, which state you're in. Uh, we're in Iowa. And, uh, Iowa. and I love, I was in Urbandale right after the police officer there was shot uh, in what, 15 or 16. And uh, they did a, a mental health symposium afterwards the lions did. But the, I'm going to tell you what, how the dice started. First of all, I got the, the PowerPoint that, that's on the QR code and uh, reach out to us. We'll send you the link to that too, if you need it. Uh, and then I, I practice law. So I went and talked with my juvenile judge and the Children's Policy Council. And I said, you know, this is what Lions has to offer. I can get a grant up to uh, $15,000. And I think we can put it into your system free. Would this help your students? And she says, I see 200 juvenile, uh, juveniles a year that are accused of delinquent acts. Uh, I would think that it would help the students. And so from that, we applied for the $1,500 grant and we got the Children's Policy Council, which is here, that's all of your child welfare workers, your mental health, your school official, anyone that works with, with troubled children together we did the presentation what Lions Quest is and how it would impact the community. The judge spoke as to why that she thought that she needed in her court system and she asked for the community to help. And she says, uh, how many of you will give five hours a year to help a child? Because if so, I need you to sign up because I want you to teach some of these lessons. And so, and I want you to mentor some of these children and she, had 18 out of 52 people sign up that day to help to mentor some of her at-risk children. And so we're putting the program in, we're gonna to begin to train virtually so because the training virtually is a little bit uh, more cost-effective than bringing the trainer to, to the district for us. And so we're gonna train virtually in July, August 17th, we're gonna start lesson one of the Alliance uh, program. We've got it set for it to cycle through the fir first full year. And uh, my club is beginning to talk about how we're going to set up the 12 months of activities for our community-based LEO club with our at-risk students. And we're going to, to make a difference that way. So I would suggest maybe looking at the, the information, getting the back end of your district governor team and begin to one, share it with the, your district, but go and talk with, with your juvenile judge and say, would you help us to pilot this in Iowa? Uh, we, we'll bring it to you for free. Uh, we'll give you five years of, of license and we'll have a Lions Club to, to walk alongside you. Our club would like to have it as a project. Can, can we partner with, you, with your court? Either use the courtroom and her juvenile, her, his or her juvenile uh, probation officers to present the material or find three or four Lions like yourself that's already experienced in the juvenile justice system, take the training and say, judge, if you'll send uh, your youth to us, we'll provide them a certificate at the end of 16 weeks. We'll send them back to you 
and then you can let them off for of probation. And so it, it's only limited by your imagination as to how it will work in your community. We can talk offline about some other ideas uh, if that's necessary, or you can get your district governor teams together and we will take and um, have a Zoom and just talk about your part of Iowa. And tell me again, which town you're in. Doug, you're muted. What town, which town? Hudson, which Iowa. Iowa. Hudson, okay. We've got three here from our Northeast Iowa district tonight, so. That is awesome. Thank you yeah. so very much. Uh, we're here to help and, and I'm gonna take and uh, be available uh, when we finish this evening, okay? Uh, Dennis, I am so sorry that, that I cut you off, but you raised your hand second. That's okay. I just want to know how successful the program has been thus far in CA1. Uh, how many CA Lions Quest do we have currently in Constitutional Area 1? Do you happen to have that number? I do not know across the United States how many that we have that are active. I got that list uh, emailed to me last week, but I haven't had time to, to go through it. Um, I would say that in traditional schools, we've probably got, what, a couple hundred, maybe 250. And then okay. this at-risk concept is just not rolling out. We do have a club that is being chartered in North Florida right now. We have a club, it's either North Carolina or South Carolina, that is being formed right now around Lions Quest, both of them in areas where that there have been uh, some gun violence and, and some uh, drug problems. We're also okay. uh, going to be able to promote our memorandum of understanding with the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency, and they're going to be available to help our Lions Quest clubs as well. Okay, perfect. All right, thanks, sir. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. Anything else? Any other questions? If not, let me thank everyone uh, for being here this evening. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and